In this video, we review Sony CCD TR101, Hi8 camcorder from the 90s. Why would you use a camera from the 90s when you have so many cameras? Okay, so why is this rather ordinary looking Sony Handycam so famous? It's because of this switch right in front. Before this feature, home movies typically looked like this and produced reactions typically like this. The optical image stabilization was a new innovation developed jointly with Canon, which was far superior than the previous version of stabilization, which was digital, and that resulted in a loss of picture quality. Sony even goes so far to suggest in their literature you can take stable videos when riding a horse. That might be pushing it, though. Hello. I'm Mr. Red. Well, I guess if a horse can talk, anything is possible, who knows. Let's get on to the camera. I bought it on eBay and it came in its original box and a lot of the original paperwork, typical Sony marketing materials, warranty cards, brochures, and of course, the most important thing is the instructions. Hi8 does require a special kind of tape formulation, metal evaporated tape, so it did come with that, along with a foreign adapter plug, uh, the charger, which is needed, a battery which won't work because it's the original battery, the charging back so you can power the camera off of AC, a remote control, which is actually what this pop-up receiver is for, the back of the remote control, some more useless cables, and the camera itself, which is a very attractive sort of two-tone dark gray black, chunky but attractive Hi8 unit with a nice window there so you could see the tape and the back for the battery. Sony has always been very confusing with their prefix designation, and this is no exception. The TR and the TR-101 originally stood for travel series, but the TRV, which is the newer designation, means that the cameras had a fold-out LCD. This camera does not. But what it does do is shoot in the newer 400-line resolution high 8 format, which was Sony's answer to JVC's Super VHS format introduced prior. The camera sports a 1 3rd inch CCD chip, as the years went on and cameras came out, CCD sizes actually started to decrease. In this video, we're going to look at the overall features, controls, and operations of this camera. We're going to bring it onto the streets of New York City and Atlantic City to see how well it does. And we're also going to get the opinion of my mother. The camera's prominent lens has a 10 times optical zoom, which is controlled by a rocker switch on top to speed. The power switch on top switches between VCR and camera control. Ejecting the tape is a rather noisy, whiny process. This flap hides the composite and S-video connectors and the viewfinder does tilt up. So like many of the vintage camcorder models, when you look through the viewfinder, don't forget your image is gonna be in black and white. But if you're manually controlling your settings like white balance, shutter speed, and exposure, you'll see that update in real time in the viewfinder, which is convenient. When you play back your tapes, you can also see them playing back live in the viewfinder as well. There is a mic and a headphone port, but man, this little cap here for the headphone port is just asking to be lost, isn't it? This switch prevents you from accidentally recording. You have two tally lights, one in the back, and one in the front for your talent to see. And here is your switch if you want to record in Hi8 or not. So the question is, can we see the difference between Hi8 and regular 8? Let's put it to the test. This is Hi8. This is Hi8. This is regular 8. This is regular 8. If you're watching on a phone or a small screen, it may not be so easy to see, but the Hi8 is definitely sharper and the colors are a little more poppy. And it's not a significant difference by today's standards, but back then it was a bit of a jump. In the close-up shot of the flower, the regular 8 millimeter does a lot better than it did in the wide angle shot. The two look a lot closer, and that's probably because there's more detail to begin with in the image, so the regular 8 millimeter does much better. So this camera uses a CR2025 battery at the base of the camera to set the time and date function. So I ordered a new battery because I wanted to see if I really could set the date to the year 2021. This is from 1992, 
Do they have the date available for 2021? Let's take a look and see. So to set the date, you have to repeatedly press the date button forward. Here's 2009, 10, 11, 12, 15, 16, 17, 19, 20. It goes back to 1992. Wow. I guess they figured after 2020, if anybody's using this camera, there's no hope for them. Speaking of which, so on a recent outing with my mom at dinner, I took out the camera from my bag so she wouldn't notice, but then pointed it right at her face. What's that? Oh, this is a camera from the 90s. From the 90s? Yeah. Why would you use a camera from the 90s when you have so many cameras? Explain that, huh? So does anybody have any ideas what I should tell my mom in answer to that question, why I'm using a camera from the 90s? Leave your ideas in the comment section below because I have to get back to her. Here's some sample footage of this TR-101 stretching its legs in New York City. This demonstrates the two-speed zoom from the slow speed to the fast speed. And the 10 times zoom really does give you an excellent reach as you can see from this video, and does hold it fairly stable, although I was moving the camera a little bit here. I do have an A-B comparison of stabilization on and off just in a couple of minutes. For low light footage, here is July 4th. You can see the fireworks and hear the fireworks, although I didn't see the main show. You could see the reflection off of the building. City from the hotel room. Full zoom with stabilization on. And you can see in this comparison of stabilization on versus off that when you put the stabilizer on, it's not zooming in on the picture like digital electronic stabilization is. It's actually stabilizing the image without any zooming in and retaining the quality. Some more lower light examples. This is inside the casino. And this is shot later in the day, more towards sunset. It was typical if you were shooting an eight millimeter videotape to get dropouts like this on the tape, which really could ruin a scene. It's Atlantic City's finest hour. The escape rooms and traffic camera are the number one thing to do in Let's look at the titling function of this camera, if you really can call it titling. So the instruction book says to use a title with a high contrast level. So I wrote out a, my title of my YouTube channel on a white card and then hit the memory button and then you're supposed to be able to superimpose it over the video, but it didn't really work. So I tried something with more contrast or more pop and that seemed to work out better as you can see from the TV screen that I'm shooting it off of. Uh, and you can actually change the color of this. It's a weird sort of cheesy primitive type of effect, but I suppose there's some type of use for it. Again, this is 1992. So in conclusion, I would consider this a real solid vintage cam, a famous cam in that it's the very first to have image stabilization, optical image stabilization without picture degradation. Uh, it's uh, good looking, it feels beefy in the hands, it has a nice 10 times zoom and that vintage high eight picture quality look if that's what you're after. How easy is it to get? There's usually a fair amount of them on eBay. Uh, how easy is it to get one that is fully working is a little more difficult. Like so many of the high eight models from the early 90s, leaky caps is an issue with this camera. You have to get lucky. You have to really question the seller. Again, I can't stress enough. If you get a chance, watch my video about buying vintage camcorders on eBay. Uh, you can get them. You just have to be careful that they work because they definitely do suffer, uh, unfortunately, for some problems. Because, but it really is a nice cam and I really do recommend it uh, if you're a collector. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.